In this video we are going to extend the Spring Authorization Server. All the data comes from a database in this project. We are going to create and configure the following beans. The JPA User Details Manager. The JPA Registered Client Repository. The JPA OAuth 2 Authorization Service. And the JPA OAuth 2 Authorization Consent Service. We will start with a new project and will first go over the code of this new project. Then we will implement the database connections step by step. We created a new project with the latest versions of Spring Boot and Spring Authorization Server. First, let's briefly go over the Maven POM XML file. Spring Boot Starter version 3.0.4 Java version 17, Spring Boot Starter Web, and Spring Security OAuth 2 Authorization Server version 1.0.1. We will now briefly go over the two classes. First, there is the default main class with the Spring Boot application annotation, and the security config class with the two security filter chain methods with the default settings. The in memory user details manager, which we will replace later by a JPA user details manager. The user details manager has one user with username, password, and authorities. The bcrypt password encoder. The in memory registered client repository, which we will soon replace with a JPA registered client repository. The registered client repository has one registered client with ID, client ID, client secret, scopes, redirect URLs, client authentication method, authorization grant types, token settings, and client settings. Then we have the token settings with access token format and access token time to live. The client settings with require proof key and require authorization consent. The authorization server settings without custom settings. The in memory OAuth 2 authorization service, we are going to replace this later with a JPA OAuth 2 authorization service. The in memory OAuth 2 authorization consent service, we are going to replace it with a JPA OAuth 2 authorization consent service. With the OAuth 2 token customizer, we can customize the ID token and the access token to our liking. With the JWT decoder, we can decode the tokens. And with the JWK source, we can sign the tokens along with the private methods generate RSA and generate RSA key. This project is available on GitHub as a repository under the main branch. You can find the link under this video in the description. We can now start the project a first time and test it with Postman. After we start the project, we can test the Spring Authorization Server. This time we use Postman. First we test the client credentials grant flow with the following settings. Type OAuth2. Grant type client credentials. Access token URL. Client ID, Client Secret, Scope, and click Get New Access Token. We get the access token and all the settings in a new window. The second test is the authorization code grant type. Type again is OAuth2. Grant type is now authorization code. Now we need a redirect URL an auth URL, an access token URL, the client ID, client secret, and the scopes. If we now look at get new access token, we get a window from the Spring Authorization Server to log in with the user and password. After we log in, we get a window from Postman with the access token, the refresh token, and the ID token with all the info about the tokens.
The first thing that needs to be done to implement the JPA User Details Manager is to modify the Maven POM XML file. We need the following dependencies. Spring Boot Starter Data JPA MariaDB Java Client and Lombok. The next thing is to modify the Application Properties file. We need the following configuration for the database connection. With this configuration, the tables are automatically created for us by Spring JPA. In the Security Config class, we remove the in-memory user details manager. We need two entity classes, Security User and Authority. In the Security User, we have the JPA and Lombok annotations, and the fields, ID, Username, Password, Authorities, Account Non-Expired, Account Non-Locked, Credentials Non-Expired, and Enabled. In the Authority, we have the JPA and Lombok annotations, and the fields, ID, and Authority. To do the database connection, we also need a user repository interface. This extends the JPA repository and a custom method find by username. Finally, we have the new JPA User Details Manager class which implements User Details Manager interface and overrides. Load user by username. Create user. Update user. Delete user. Change password. And user exists. To keep it clear, we have only modified load user by username and user exists. In the load user by username, we load the user from the database and check if the username is correct. In this case, the username is case sensitive. Then we convert the authorizations to granted authority and return the user from Spring Security. Is the user exists method, we check if the user exists in the database. I also want to briefly go over the SQL file to populate the database with test data. We create three authorities and three users and the necessary relations. You can also find the SQL file on GitHub with the link in the description. The next step in this video is to configure the JPA registered client repository. The first class is the client entity class. We have the Entity and Lombok annotations, and the fields, ID, Client ID, Client ID issued at, Client Secret, Client Secret expires at, Client Name, Client Authentication Methods, Authorization Grant Types, Redirect URIs, Scopes, Client Settings, and token settings. Then we have the client repository interface which extends the JPA repository with one custom method find by client ID. The biggest chunk of code is the JPA registered client repository class. You can find this code on the website docs.spring.io. The link can be found in the description. The JPA Registered Client Repository class implements Registered Client Repository and overrides save. Find by ID and find by client ID. The rest of the code are private methods to convert client settings from objects to entity and vice versa. The last class is the Security Config class. Here the in-memory Registered Client Repository bean is removed. As in the previous section, I also want to briefly show the SQL commands to load the table with test data. You can find this SQL code via a link in the description. The next step in this video is to configure the JPA OAuth 2 authorization service. We start with the Entity class authorization, and all the Entity and Lombok annotations, and a whole bunch of fields which we are not going to go over one by one. Next is the authorization repository interface which extends JPA repository with a number of custom methods.
Then we have the JPA OAuth 2 authorization service which implements OAuth 2 authorization service and overrides save. Remove. Find by ID. And find by token. Also here we have some private methods to convert the objects to entities and vice versa. Finally the security config class where the memory OAuth 2 authorization service pane is removed. The final step in this video is the configuration of the JPA OAuth 2 authorization consent service. We start with the entity class authorization consent. And all entity and Lombok annotations the following fields. Registered client ID. Principal name. And authorities. And the static ID class authorization consent ID. The next is the authorization consent repository interface which extends JPA repository. And the following custom methods. Find by registered client ID and principal name. Delete by registered client ID and principal name. Then we have the JPA OAuth 2 authorization consent service which implements OAuth 2 authorization consent service and override save. Remove and find by ID. Also here we have some private methods to convert the objects to entities and vice versa. Finally the security config class where the in-memory OAuth 2 authorization consent service pane is removed. We have come to the end and can now start the project and test it. We got to the point where we started the project and could test it. I would first like to briefly show you the database tables the tables were all automatically created by Spring JPA, and we then provided them with test data. We have the following tables. Authorities. Authorization. Authorization consent. Client. Users. And users authorities. The users. Authorities. And users authorities tables have the following data. You can find these SQL commands on GitHub via the link in the description. The client table has the following data. Also this code can be found on GitHub via the link in the description. The authorization table is empty for now and will be filled with data from the Spring authorization server every time someone wants to log in. The last table is the authorization consent. Also this table is empty for now and will be filled with data from the Spring Authorization Server every time someone wants to log in. We are now back in Postman and will log in a few times, with the different users. Then we can go back to the database to see what happened. First, we will briefly go over the settings. Grant type is authorization code with PKCE. Callback or redirect URL. Auth URL. Access token URL. Client ID. Client secret. Code challenge method. Code verifier. Scope. State. Client authentication. It is important to click clear cookies each time to delete data from previous logins. Now we can click get new access token and log in with user and password. We get to see a second window. The consent required window here we have to check the scope read and press submit consent. The consent required window can be enabled or disabled in the client settings. As you can see the login with user succeeded and we get an access token, refresh token, and an ID token. I will now log in in quick succession with the admin user account and the developer account. Then we will look at the database to see what data Spring Authorization Server created.
Back in the database workbench, we can briefly go over the authorization table. As you can see, the table now has three rows of data from the Spring Authorization Server. In the column principal name, you can see that we logged in with user, admin, and developer. In the authorization consent table, you can see the three logins with user, admin, and developer, and with each user the scopes. We have come to the end of this video. Hopefully, I was able to teach you something. Thanks for following to the end, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and our channel.